All right, so this is our first video, a little bit of a primer, see how it goes. Get to look forward to this for the rest of the quarter, maybe, well, most of it. Um, so, got their setup going here, we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna start out, this is just a little review video. We're gonna talk about chapter seven. Everyone doesn't always end in the same place, make sure we're on the same page, and really make sure it's clear what is gonna be important going forward with the class. So. You know, what was it? There's a lot of stuff in chapter seven. There was the quantum numbers, electron configuration, ionization energies, all kinds of stuff. So we're just gonna really boil it down to just the key features that we really need moving forward. And I'm gonna sneak in a little bit of introduction on the chapter eight stuff as well. So you can kind of see where it's, where it's coming into play. So, you know, chapter seven. The, the key thing is, when we were talking about chapter seven, we were going, okay, where the electrons are in an atom. And then we took it to the next level and we also brought ions into play. So either one of those, you know, where they were in an atom or ion. Now this is gonna be the key thing right here because when we get to chapter eight, this is what we're gonna be using. So what are we talking about here? Well, we'll start with the easiest element of all, hydrogen, right? What better place to start than the very beginning? First element on our periodic table. Not that you can see that one over there. For those of you who know the room, it's that way. So, hydrogen had that one valence electron, right? So it has one electron total that's in its valence shell as well. So valence electrons, total electrons. There are no inner electrons in hydrogen. It can't, you know, whereas it's hard on its sleeve, it's all on the outside. So. Where is that electron? Well, you know, chapter two, we're like, ah, yeah, it's valence shell, whatever. Chapter seven, we go, ah, it's in the 1s orbital. So that electron resides in the 1s orbital. Okay. So there are a couple ways we could talk about this. There was the orbital diagram. So we could kind of draw a diagram here. Call it the orbital, orb, orbital diagram. I'm sure I'll just cut around that. <laughs> yeah, right. We got one electron, I will say it's spin up. It's in that 1s orbital. That's the only orbital we have electrons in. So it's right there. You can also have the electron configuration. So we got our electron config. We're talking about the same thing, just a different way. And we just go, okay, well we got our 1s orbital and there's one electron in it. So it's 1s1. Again, not a lot of electrons to stack in here. We're starting at the very beginning. Okay, now the thing about hydrogen is it can be a cation or an anion. So we can have a cation or an anion. So it can be a positive or negatively charged ion. So it can pick up one electron, it can dump off one electron. So you might remember the H plus ions that um, acids released. We talked about that in chapter four, push it out, we get you know, those acidic protons floating around. Well, that's our H plus, right? It'd also be an anion, H minus, which is hydride. Don't mess with hydride. That stuff will tear you up. So, you know, you want to light water or ice on fire? Get some with hydride in it and a lighter. That'll get the job done. Very reactive, very aggressively trying to get rid of that electron. But this can happen. And so we can talk about H plus, or we can talk about H minus. We can talk about their electron configurations or their orbital diagrams. Well, we don't have any electrons in H plus, so we just have an empty orbital. H minus, we got our 1s orbital. We add an electron, guess where it goes? Somebody got a roommate. Someone's gotta deal with, I didn't make those dirty dishes. What are they doing there? Ah, oh, it's that stupid spin down roommate of mine. Okay, so we fill that orbital with the second electron. And so, you know, we have like a 1s0 or 1s2. Talk about electron config. But really we wanna focus on this. Now, this is just the beginning. This is a little bit of a reminder. These are how we talk about electrons in chapter seven. Or, or yeah, chapter seven. Now, when we talk about this 1s orbital, what are we talking about? Well, we need to discuss the shapes. So to do that, I'm gonna need to wipe my board. So give me one second here. All right, look at that, huh? How about that? 
boom, the power of editing. Okay, so we've got our S, P, D orbitals, and there's also F orbitals on the periodic table. But we're not going to worry about those look like. Good God, there's not enough time in the world to draw that. So S orbitals, this is like a sphere. Whoops, a sphere. Yeah, it's just, you got your nucleus in the middle, and it's just equidistant all the way around. So if an electron is in an S orbital, it's somewhere in this sphere. You know, it gets tricky figuring out where exactly, but that is kind of the pasture it gets to roam. Now, if it's in a P orbital, it's kind of shaped like a peanut. Might be how you think of it. And so the electron has these two lobes it can be in, and you got the nucleus in the middle. And so it might be over here, it might be over there, it can move back and forth. And there's only one S orbital for every inner, you know, um, value of n, but for a p, there's one that goes like this, one that goes like, like this, and then one that goes like that. So there's three of them. So we can fit six electrons in p orbitals for any n value, only two for any given S value. And then for d orbitals, we can fit 10. And the way I remember these is they're like a double peanut, or there's a the weird one with a donut. I'm not going to draw it. I'm not that good. But you can think of this like, oh, yeah double peanut. Now we're really going to focus on the shapes of these. Sphere, these two lobes, four lobes, because that is going to be what comes into play for how do we share electrons in a molecule. And that's what chapter 8 is all about. And so before we get there, we just want to kind of rewind, make sure we're all on the same page. I'll have um, some chapter 7 review stuff that I pull out of my 221. I'll load that up so you can get some professionally 3D rendered versions of these the simulators so you can see how they fill, all that stuff. We'll, we'll play around with that on the, on the uh, Moodle page. But for now, you can deal with my high quality, fancy black and white drawings. Okay, clearly three dimensional, by the way. So, this is what we have. And then, you know, our S orbitals, that's like our first two columns on the periodic table. And then we go, as we go across into the non metals, we start filling our P orbitals. And then our transition metals give rise to the D orbitals. And then like the lanthanide series, the actinide series, all the way at the bottom, cut away. Because God, that thing would be way too wide if we shoved them in there. So we just kind of do a cutaway. So it can fit on a somewhat normal ratioed piece of paper or whatever. Those are the F orbitals. You can look those up if you're curious. Like I said, they're beyond my drawing capability. And so, you know, S is for sphere, P is for peanut, D is for double peanut, F is for forget about it, don't worry about it. They don't show up in chemical bonds. They don't show up in chapter eight. We're not gonna worry about it. If you're working with that stuff at that end of the periodic table, you've got much bigger concerns, trust me. All right, so that's what we're gonna focus on next. So in chapter eight, let's back it up here. Okay, so. What we're starting, Chem 222 with. Where electrons are Okay, so we've talked about these shapes, but moving forward, what are we going to do? Well, that's what we start 222 with. It's where are electrons in a molecule? Not an ion, not an atom, but we start pushing other or these atoms and making molecules. And so where are the electrons in these larger structures? And so these are held together by sharing electrons. These are covalent molecules. Ions, we know where they are. They're on the ions or they're not as a cation, lost some electrons. But on these guys, where are they being shared? What does that look like? What is the shape of that molecule? What's going on? We're going to spend some time on that in this class. And so here's a little early introduction. If it's not totally clicking, 
don't panic. We're gonna spend a lot of time talking about this. And so, you know, what we're talking about will be something like, again, we're gonna keep it simple. It's gonna ramp up from here later. And we're actually gonna ramp up to this. Like we're gonna back up as we go through chapter eight. But we have something like a hydrogen and a hydrogen. Two atoms, they're gonna make a molecule. And so what we have, we have hydrogen with one valence electron, hydrogen with one valence electron. This makes our H2 molecule, because it's a diatomic element, makes a gas, a little H2 floating around. You don't see H's by themselves, because they're gonna do this spontaneously. This is how you find them. Or you find them in another compound, like water or something. But this is our simplest molecule. And so what we have right here, this is a chemical bond. And we'll talk more about these drawings and structures, you know, later on in the class. And we have our one valence electron right here being represented. So this is what we're talking about. Like, we have a molecule. They are sharing electrons. So there are two electrons being shared here. Each of them pitches in. They each throw in half, you know, half of a bond. They throw in one electron. They share the two electrons. That fills their valence shell. Completes the octet, or however you want to put it. Any of that outdated terminology. So. They each have two electrons around them because they're sharing. And so what does this look like spatially? Well, you know, we've got something like this. Here's our H, here's our H. It comes across. And what we get is an overlap area. They come together, they have a bond. That is where the electrons are going to be shared. That is a chemical bond. So, this is what we're going to talk about. And this is kind of like a chemical reaction. We've taken matter, we've rearranged it into something else. We're going to talk about that. We're going to spend a whole chapter on it. So, the spatial idea, though, is very important because we're going to start talking about more complex molecules, what shape they are. We're going to have to, like, mix and match and remix these orbitals through Vesper theory and all that kind of stuff. Talk about shape and, you know, where the electrons are talk about whether electrons are being shared equally or unequally. There's a whole lot we're gonna go into, and that's just the beginning of the class, so hang in there. All right, so hopefully this video comes out okay. If not, I gotta reshoot the whole thing. We'll find out. All right, um, there'll be more information on the Moodle page as we go along. I'm gonna try to film all of my normal lecture material. We'll see how well I follow through on that goal, but I will constantly be updating you as we're kind of figuring it out. We're going to be stumbling our way through this class. So welcome to 222. I'll be doing my best job to get this to you remotely and hang in there. Stay safe. All right.